what we are learning is that Ghanaian leaders could be deliberately looking the other way while its neighbors in West Africa are battered by insurgency. Ghana's near and far neighbors in the Sahel have all suffered extremist attacks. I'll tell you more right now. Indeed, let's take a look at this issue that has to do with extremist activities in West Africa. Ghana's near and far neighbors in the Sahel, as she well may be aware, have all suffered extremist attacks, killing hundreds of citizens, sometimes at a time. But Ghana's northern region has remained the lone spot of sanity in the Sahel, and some researchers say this could be as a result of what is described as a, quote, de facto non-aggression with JNIM or JNIM. And I want you to pay attention to those initials. The research also points to a high-ranking government source who, quote, acknowledges that Ghana serves as a supply line and recognizes that disrupting these networks could provoke violence. Uh, the threat of an attack, that government source says, is why we don't disturb them too much. Now, let me explain this. In a nutshell, Ghanaian authorities are intentionally not doing anything about this, essentially throwing our neighbors under the bus, and that's why our border security is lax, according to this paper. Now, what does it mean for Ghana to be a critical supply for extremist groups like Jama'at, Nusrat, Al-Islam, Wa Muslimin? You may have heard me before when I referred to them as, by their initials, excuse me, Janim. Now, let me tell you. They talk about food, they talk about non-perishable supplies like dynamite, fuel, cattle, motorcycles, and then manpower, recruit. But then we also know that sometime in May 2024, uh, Ghana's ambassador to Burkina Faso had talked about some of them coming in to use our medical facilities. So now the question, is this the case that Ghana is purposely ignoring Islamist activities inland to prevent attacks or this could be Western propaganda to destabilize our country. I've got the man to help us unpack that. First joining us is Ghana's ambassador to Burkina Faso, Boniface, uh, uh, His Excellency Boniface Agambila. Uh, he's joined us via Zoom. Uh, Honorable, thank you so much for making time to speak to us. But Your Excellency, is this true that Ghana is turning a blind eye to the activities of Islamists here just so we will not be the subject of attacks? Uh, if it was true, by now Ghana would have been hot. Because if it was true, terrorists would be in Ghana by now. We, we agree that uh, criminals can be smarter than uh, innocent p uh, people. But we only need to strengthen security at our borders and in our homes. That's all the messages we've been given. Um, we said it was, there was a possibility that people could just sneak in and do things without anybody's knowledge. If somebody decides to cross our frontiers, go to a private clinic. He could get uh, with money, he gets treatment and he runs back. But that does not mean, or that is not to say, we have seen them and we know them. These terrorists, you will know them. You don't know them. And uh, Ghana cannot be adamant to things. Wherever that research is coming from is strange mm. because Ghana has been, Ghana has taken a proactive role, a preventive role. You are in the media. You very clearly will remember the president of Ghana, President Nanado, initiated Accra Initiative. And you know more about the Accra Initiative. It was a group of countries bordering with Burkina to come together mm. to strategize proactively, strategize preventively. I because see. logically, logically, the attacks or the incursion very relevant within the Sahel area. Mm. 
And Burkina Faso, is, Burkina Faso is between the coastal countries and the Sahel. Very the well. Objective so, so, of... so, Your Excellency, uh, if, you, if you read this yes. uh, paper by uh, the Netherlands organization, it tells you or it comes yes. to the conclusion that two things are true. That Ghana may be involved in the Accra Initiative and in fact, uh, you know, taking steps to ensure that extremist activities are... Uh, you know, checked in, in the Sahel region, but at the same time, they cite a, a high-ranking government source who admits that, listen, we know they're coming to a country, this is a safe haven for us, a, a, you know, a, you know a, a, a group of words that you have used yourself before, that this appears to be a safe haven for, uh, you know, insurgents when they come to Ghana, for which reason this high-ranking government official says that we look the other way. Yes, in response to that question, it is that criminals may find that Ghana could be a, a safe heaven. It didn't say that it is a safe heaven. Okay? So, the no, message must Your be Excellency, clearly... you, were, you were quoted in the paper, and in the paper it says that you say the criminals consider this place a safe haven. Is it the case that we yeah, are aware of the activities here? But for our own peace, we look the other way? Why are you putting words in my mouth? I'm saying that the response to the media was that the criminals could find Ghana as a safe heaven. Mm -hmm. It didn't mean that they find it as a safe heaven. And I'm saying that. Those criminals, they are not at a place you know them. Ghana doesn't know them. Uh, other countries will not know them. They are unpredictable criminals. How they organize an attack, you cannot know. No country will know. Mm. The Burkina government has now advanced in capacity, in training, and in attacks. So you hear more about attacks, but the government of Burkina today is on top of its levels. Terrorists today fear Burkina. Mm. Territories they have, the territories they have hitherto taken control. I see. The government, the authorities are in control now of most of the areas. Areas that you couldn't go are now under control. Schools were closed. No, no children could go to school. Now children go to school. So all we're saying, looking at the, nature, the landmass, criminals can run to anywhere with your knowledge or without your knowledge. And mostly they will hide. So we are saying, when the Accra Initiative was created, it was created to be a preventive and a proactive institution to help the people of Burkina to well, combat terrorism. Indeed. So how can it be that I, Ghana has turned a blind eye? So if the objective of terrorists or this jihadist group is to conquer the world, and you think that when they conquer Burkina, which will be the next country, logically, if they conquer Burkina, Ghana is in danger. So that is why Ghana has taken steps to strategize locations in Ghana and the other Very countries. Well, so Your Excellency, will, will, you then, will you then say that this paper and its content and its attribution that Ghana is deliberately allowing insurgent uh, you know, to use the country as a safe haven just so it is protected from attacks, Western propaganda? Would you consider it that? They, where are they from? I don't know them. And I haven't heard of them until this publication. Where are they coming from? Did they come through to see the grounds? Have they seen Ghana doing anything on toward? Who knows them? I don't know them. Perhaps you do. And where do they get the information from? 
from research. Who did they talk to in the, as you claim, they claim a higher authority. Which higher authority? Of where? And who did they contact to get the information? These terrorists are unknown. You can you won't see them. How did they get to them? To know that they are in under control and they are getting uh, whatever it is. How? How does that happen? Is this Western propaganda and an attempt to destabilize our country? Maybe you see elections time, so many things can happen. Maybe some people are doing some propaganda due to our elections coming December 7th. Or they're doing their propaganda with fake information, maybe from wherever they get their, they are able to uh, design this research, research that they didn't contact the right people. They didn't, con who did they contact to get the feedback? You know, so when you read it, Very well. so you read it, you don't see anything sensible in it, I except a fake. I see, you think it's fake? You think Ghana doesn't like his people? <laughs> so where are they coming from? Mm, very well. Uh, Your Excellency, why don't you hold, uh, you know, the connection for me? I want to bring in now uh, security expert Dr. Adam Bona. Uh, let's let's rope him into the conversation. Uh, Doc, good evening to you. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us tonight. But you know the conversation and how it's gone so far, the fact that uh, this research paper is accusing, uh, you know, the government, essentially, the government of, of Ghana of looking away, turning a blind eye to insurgents using this place as a safe haven in exchange of, you know, uh, it, some sort of protection, so to speak. Your thoughts on that? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello? Dr. Bona, I can hear you. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Uh, we'll see Dr. Bona cannot hear us. We'll fix that connection. In the meantime, uh, let's, let's return to our chat hello. with uh, Ghana's ambassador to Burkina Faso, His Excellency Boniface Agambila. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, so essentially we, we heard yes. today that uh, there had been a high-level meeting uh, around the situation between Ghana and Burkina Faso as far as uh, this ins insurgent research paper is concerned. Is this a meeting you, you were privy to? That's what you say they say. That's what they say they say will always create problems. No, that's not no, what I said. I'm not aware. I, that's not what I said. I, I'm, I, what I said was that we're hearing reports that there were meetings. <laughs> there were meetings, uh, you know, as a result of this paper that had come to light through uh, the media. Is this a meeting you attended? Is this a meeting you were privy to? No. No. So there was no meeting? If it is a fake meeting, if it was a genuine uh, report, I'm sure uh, I would have heard of it. But no. Maybe people don't want to follow fake things. So. Very well. So. Your Excellency, the last time you spoke to Ghanaian media, you talked about the, uh, is it seven people who had been uh, taken uh, by, uh, you know, insurgents suspected. What's the state of those people who have gone missing? Uh, the governments are here to give us feedback. Are, are we still looking the for them? The authorities are here to give us feedback. Are we still looking for them? Uh, what, what efforts have we put in place? Yeah, the authorities are on top. The authorities will tell us whatever it is. Mm. Honorable, hold the connection for me. I'm going to bring in uh, Adam Bona. Give it another try. Dr. Adam Bona is a security expert in case you're just joining us. Doc, uh, you, you've heard the conversation, really. Uh, this paper, again, uh, I'd, I'd say, is, uh, is accusing the Ghanaian government of looking the other way while insurgents use this place as a safe haven uh, in exchange of protection. What are your thoughts on such an accusation? Well, yes, uh, good evening, uh, Kemeni, and good evening to your viewers, uh, the, uh, Mr. Agambela on the other side. 
Well, I, I am surprised that up to now, the national security that is supposed to be holding uh, the, the front, that, that's supposed to be doing these things for us, probably hasn't spoken. Because you have a major publication that seems to be scandalizing our you know, national security architecture. And in fact, drawing in inferences with regards to uh, terrorists. And the national security up to now, we haven't had 24 hours, we haven't had any official communication, either denying or, you know, confirming, accepting uh, what the publication is attributing to the government of the Republic of Ghana. For me, I find that very worrying. But to speak to it, I mean, it's, it's just like, uh, you know, uh, His Excellency Gambela said. Uh, it, is, it is an open secret that, uh, you know, some of these people might be coming in through unofficial uh, routes. But then the question, as my other colleagues have asked, you know, throughout the day, I have also asked is, why now? Uh, are they sensing that we are going to the polls and therefore they are positioning their, their businesses to be able to, uh, you know, sell uh, military equipment and security equipment to us. Or there is something that they know that we are not aware of. And so as far as I'm concerned, it's an open secret that some of these people might be coming in and uh, our officials might, wouldn't know. It would be difficult for me to accept that uh, they come in with the tacit support of our officials and our officials would have done a deal with them, uh, you know, to come in. I don't want to think so. I mean, I have been uh, actively uh, participating in uh, the Accra Initiative activities. And the cry on call has been to see how the coastal states can collaborate in, in you know, fighting this canker within the Sahel that is coming towards us. So I, I, I'm so asking, why has the national security, mm, why I has Kandapa and his people not, do they know something that the rest of us, because I shouldn't be doing the work for Kandapa and his people. I haven't been paid to say government has no knowledge of this. Right. Kandapa but, and but, his but people, look. Kandapa and his people, they are paid to tell us that what these people are saying, because it has to do with our national security. So they can't be, they can't be there unconcerned when the, the country is being dragged down this way and they are quiet because it is their job to do it and it is our job to do, to probably either put out what we think but it looks like we are the frontliners and they've taken the back bench which i, I think it doesn't speak well to to uh, our national security architecture Come in. very well so just a few things from the paper the paper does not refer to a handshake deal between ghana and you know Jenim. It, what it says is that there appears to be a de facto agreement between the, uh, uh, you know, Ghana looks away, essentially. We know they're here, but we, we look away. Uh, we do not care, really, that they're here, because once they use this place as a safe haven, then would have some, some kind of protection. Is there anything that Ghana could have done in this instance? Well, anything government could have done, whoever, I'm not sure whether the, you know, the, the, the newspaper or the, the news cable that published this, they have a reporter here. If they have a reporter here, I believe Ghana could have summoned the reporter or Ghana could have sanctioned them because obviously they are intruding into our national security space. And therefore, if it is not true, I believe there are remedial measures we can activate. And so as far as I'm concerned, as for a de facto agreement, well, a de facto agreement is an agreement. Obviously, the work of terrorists is illegal. So you cannot sign a deal with terrorists, uh, you know, to let them in while they probably stay away from bombing your territory. So obviously, there can only be one agreement, if indeed there is one, which is the de facto one you refer to. But like I said, the onus is on the national security architecture of the country. To let us know, let the whole world know mm. whether there is any informal agreement between the Republic of Ghana and terrorists coming from the Burkina area. I have been around the area. I've, I've driven into the, that side of Burkina through the Hamile border. And, you know, and 
uh, there is a lot of apprehension. I see. Doug, how, how curious is it also that this paper tells us that it is because of this de facto agreement that our border is so lax? I don't think our border is so lax. If you know the architecture, especially towards the northern border, I mean, we are, people are related. I mean, these are relations. It was just an artificial, you know, uh, line, thin line that was drawn to divide us from, you know, those on the other side. And so if you say, do we build a wall? I mean, so for me, I think that is a non-starter. It's not possible to say our, our you know, border security is lax. Border, we, we, yeah, I mean, I don't think so. I don't think, even though if you ask me, we might not have all the things. But I have visited some of these border communities. We have substantial improvement with regards to, you know, uh, forwarding posts. The immigration now have, you know, a very important uh, setups there, the military, the police. So we have them along some of these areas. Well, but you are talking about other areas that are not protected. Yes. And so, but I don't want to believe that anybody would want to use that against us. I think that it is our state authorities who are probably sleeping on the job, who we should be blaming in this whole conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, I want to check in on, uh, you know, Your Excellency Boniface Agambilla. Uh, hopefully he's still here with us. Your Excellency, you spoke about strong yes, border. Indeed. Um, you, strong, you spoke about strong border security earlier. Uh, this paper is telling us that we have intentionally uh, relaxed our border security because of this de facto agreement with the insurgents. I'd have you react to that. But essentially, what do you want the Ghanaian people to do with this information that this paper has released? This, this paper's release, I haven't seen it uh, until bits of it today. But you see, I don't know if you have traveled up to the northern borders, so to know exactly how people live around the borders. And we have asked people to be suspicious when they see strangers, see something, say something, okay? If, if the government of Ghana puts an adamant eye to terrorism or has something to do with terrorists, it won't create see something, say something. You remember. Now, you, you see, as my friend Doc has said, when certain things, certain actions come up, you don't rush to make publications. It's good to find out exactly what it is. You don't panic and uh, quickly react to things. Perhaps that allow the government of Ghana, the authorities, to find out be properly before they can say something. So on that court, supposing we are being attacked now, strategically, there will be response. But this is not a true case as such. Somebody says he has done research, and that is his findings. And the research, you know, some of them have their own ideas about research. This research from where? Where did it cover? Nobody is aware. Perhaps someone knows how it was done, but what methodology did they use? How did they approach it? You see? So we cannot be spending our time on somebody's uh, quote-unquote fake research to say that he has gone to do research. How can a country be putting an eye away and doing sort of de facto whatever mm. with, a, uh, with people who can attack your people? Okay, F so finally, we say fi that. Finally, before I let you go, uh, Dr. Bona has indicated that we should have had something from national security uh, by now. I mean, as the... I just Ghanaian... said the, the time is, you allow reasonable time. Allow reasonable time because there are challenges to get... I said, for example, he mentioned if they have a reporter in Ghana, but this is a research done by somebody or some group. So it needs time to find out who they are. As I'm talking to, I don't know them. I've never heard of them. Okay? And so all that the government has been doing to protect the people of Ghana, the relationship between Ghana and Burkina, working together, 
uh, sharing various, communicating with each other, doing training together. Is it not enough to show that even Ghana is apprehensive or fears terrorism? Which country doesn't fear terrorism? And which country will want to promote terrorism or support terrorism against another? That mm -hmm. is the point I'm raising. Very well. Uh, yes, and the fact is, I have said it and said it again. The terrorists want to capture the world. And so when they capture Burkina or when Burkina fails, Ghana will be the next place. Uh, indeed. And it's not going to be an individual's decision. Very well. yes, so no see. government, no president of a country will, will think of that. Mm. Your Excellency, I'm afraid we're, we're out of time. We'll have to end our conversation here. Just yes. a quick word from... Uh, thank you so much for joining us, really. Uh, just a quick word from uh, Dr. Adam Bonadoc. You had uh, Your Excellency Agambila, who says that, listen, we should be giving national security a bit more time to look into this research paper before they react. Is that good enough? No, it's not good enough because in its That's admin, a reasonable it time. Is once you admit that it is fake research, once you admit something is fake, I don't know how, mu how much time you need to be able to formally come out and say it is fake. I am saying that we need an official publication yes. or official release from national security. Mm -hmm. They can come with an interim, you know, release, letting us know that they have, they, they, you know, they, they've seen this report and to uh, you know the best of their knowledge it's it's not uh, it is inaccurate well meanwhile it is investigations but to just leave it that way i mean to just leave it that way mine is that those, those who have listened to it this morning and boarded flight and they are going to probably the other countries would not see what is going on at the moment mm. but if the national security had actually counted with their report that is enough while they continue to do their investigation. So well. I will tell you that, uh, you know, their silence speaks volumes. It's almost like admitting to uh, some of the things we are saying it's, it's not it's, it's not. Do, do, Dr. Bonar, quickly, um, you mentioned earlier that you, 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 you don't know if this report is coming ahead of the elections because of weapon sales. Could you elaborate on that point quickly for me, just before we wrap up on this? You know, they, they definitely know that whether you like it or not, there will be a new government in place. And that new government in quotes, uh, you know, obviously Nanado would not continue to be the president of the Republic after the 7th of January. So what they are trying to do is to say that uh, whoever becomes the new president of Ghana, this issue came up before uh, the elections. We want you to invest in military accoutrement, you know, surveillance, security accoutrement and all that. So it's almost like psyching us up and positioning their businesses. I can tell you without any, you know, doubt in my mind that other, you know, businesses from all over the world speak to some of us and say, oh, how do we get involved in your security space moving into 2025? So it's all preparation towards probably seeing how they can influence our security, you know, procurement come 2025 and thereabouts. Well. So it's ground plan. Uh, to get us, uh, you know, do some procurement, buy certain see. things from them, whilst trying to uh, put us in a panic mood. It's not far away from the truth. Very well, Dr. Bona, I appreciate you talking to us. Thank you so much. Uh, Ghana's ambassador to Burkina Faso, uh, His Excellency Boniface Agambila joined us earlier as well. I appreciate your time as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. But also tonight, NPP parliamentary candidate for Zebela constituency, Dr. John Kinsley Krugel, has suspended his campaign and all party activities due to concerns over the Boko crisis and the, its potential impact on the Kusog traditional area. Now, his decision comes on the back of chieftaincy disputes that have sparked tensions among the people. Now, since government's intervention in the dispute, security agencies have been directed to arrest and prosecute anyone claiming to be the Boko Naba to ensure the region's stability. Tonight, the NPP parliamentary candidate has hinted if the security agencies fail to nip the rising tensions in the bad, he will take, excuse me, he will take further steps 
to protect its life and property in the Kusug traditional area. I want to bring in now our Upper East Region correspondent, Castro Senyala, who's been in the Boko area for two reasons. The first one on, this, on the situation in Boko at the moment, and then we'll talk about other issues. Uh, Castro, good evening to you. Uh, you we, we know that you are in Boko right now. Talk to us about the atmosphere there. Kasha, we cannot hear you. You'd have to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. What's the situation in Boko can, this can, evening? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. I'm asking what the situation yes, in yes. Boko is like right now. Yes, Kamini, the situation in Boko uh, at the moment is very calm. Boko is very calm and serene. As you see behind me, everything is moving on so well, uh, except that uh, earlier in the day, um, unlike how Boko is always known to be very brisk in terms of business and very lively early in the afternoon, it was very quiet with few people going about their activities also. Um, portions of the township had shops closed, uh, which, is, I mean, which is very, very unlikely of the biggest, one of the biggest municipalities in the Upper East region. Mm, I see. We know that it wouldn't only be the NPP parliamentary candidate who suspended his campaign. You were there with the NDC's running mate, Professor Nana Jenepokwajiman, who's also suspended certain activities in the community. Let's talk about why these have become necessary. Right. So uh, yesterday, the running mate of the NDC entered the region to begin her two-day campaign uh, tour of uh, uh, in some areas within the region. Uh, this morning, her first port of call was the Boko area. But uh, going into the day, uh, there was almost a call off of the campaign activities due to uh, some incidents that happened yesterday that have sort of threatened the security of the Boko township. Uh, yesterday, there were gunshots throughout the night. And so this morning, when she, uh, I mean, prepared to go, it appeared that her team was very hesitant. Uh, but she finally went there, where, went to Boko, where she first of all called on the Boko Naba, and there she expressed concerns over the insecurity situation in the uh, town and asked that uh, state actors and that of the traditional authority should, I mean, closely collaborate to be able to bring the Boko dispute to a, a closure. And now, uh, she also had to do some other activities within the town. You know, she likes to meet women folk in the town, market women. And uh, that was something that was very important and keen to her campaign uh, trip. But then because of the, I mean, the volatile nature, the tense up atmosphere in Boko, uh, she was not able to meet uh, these market women and other groups within mm. the, 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 the township. Yes. So um, she had to eventually call off the, uh, the campaign activity in the Boko area. I see. After almost um, an hour, I mean, just an hour after well. meeting the... But he had to move back. She had to move back. I beg your pardon to uh, Bogatanga. Kasha, once again, I'm out of time, but I'm grateful that you stayed up to talk to us here on Ghana Tonight. If you just joined us, this is Ghana Tonight. I'm Kemeni Amano.